did you get into boxing? Like, you're sort of a bit background about. <clears throat> my father, my father used to box. I'm not sure when his last fight was. I don't remember seeing him fight. But, um, he was a relatively good boxer. He boxed with a British title. Um, box Alan Minter. Yeah. He beat him as amateur, I think. As a pro, they boxed um, again. My dad suffered from a really bad eye. Oh, really? He's blind. He's got he's got um, a fake eye now. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Detached retina. Is that they can sort it. Yeah, that's from boxing. They can sort it out now. But back in the days, that was something they could sort out. Uh, so he lost his sight of sight in one eye. Um, he was a trainer in the gym that I um, started off as an amateur with. What gym was that? Basin Slope Park. And um, he took me to the gym on a couple of occasions. I remember being there as a, as a kid, as young as mine, um, and just running about the ring and not doing it, but just being there amongst it. But then I started, my dad took me on the pads when I was eight years old. That's when I started, really, when I was eight. But I didn't go to the gym, we just done it at his, at his house. Oh, really? Yeah, and then at nine I started going to the gym and I loved it. It wasn't because my dad was a fighter yeah. that I went there. It was obviously in me. Because yeah. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the kind of kid that your parents have to say, calm down. <laughs> when you when you, when you you play yeah. fighting, you know, calm down. <laughs> my mum would, there, there'd be, my dad would have a friend and he'd, because it's the boxing thing, everyone instantly just yeah. Yeah. shapes up in front of you. <laughs> and there'd be me like trying to knock him out. <laughs> calm down. I think that's important as for kids. That's when you know a kid's going to be good. Yeah. When they've got that little side to them. Yeah, like, that push, that, that side that you're capable of pushing. Pushing and pushing. Yeah. But yeah, so it, I love boxing. As soon as my dad took me to the gym, I knew that that's what, where I wanted to be. When my dad didn't, didn't pick me up for the training, I used to cry. Really? So yeah, love when it. he didn't let me spar, I used to cry. I just loved yeah. it. Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. It was all right. It wasn't great. Nothing to shout about. I, I never got to um, a final of a. Or did I? No, I did. Schoolboys. When I was really young. Got to the final of that. Final schoolboys. Yeah. yeah. Lost by disqualification. Oh, really? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've worked it out now. I, my concentration level is quite short. Really? So when it comes to a championship, the first early part of the championship, I'm great. None, no one can stop me. But then suddenly I just get a bit carried. But not, I forget what I'm doing and don't um, do the things I should do as far as weight, weight loss. Right. So I'm always struggling by the end to make weight. Right. And yeah, and cutting corners and that. I just lost interest, I suppose. Really? Yeah. With the with the actual competition, oh, okay. not with boxing, with yeah. the actual competition, and that's why I never got. To, I, that's why I always in the semi quarterfinals or the semi finals, I'd always end up losing. You don't get paid for you to do that. It's just, it's no, what well, you do, I, I mean, GB now, yeah, yeah. I'm, amazing amount of money. Yeah. They're trying to stop people from turning pro, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And you know, if I if I'd have been paid, I think Lee Selby, Andrew Selby, yeah. I think he was being paid some like five grand a month. It's just, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, I wouldn't turn pro for that. Yeah, I, I didn't get that as a pro. Yeah. You're in the best facilities as well. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so, like, Travelling the world. Yeah. Right. You know, amazing, yeah. yeah. And was it always your intention to turn pro? Always. That's why I trained at. My dad trained me to be a professional. <clears throat> Even as an amateur, they'd always make comment, oh, yeah, you're very professional, like your style. Just take my time, slow down. But yeah, I trained for professional. Someone asked me when I was younger what I wanted to be, which was a mistake really, because I never looked to get a trade or a fallback, which I wish which everyone should do, just in case, because anything can happen. But if anyone asked me what I wanted to be as a world champion, yeah, I used to sit there and sign my autograph over and over again, just to practice. And I think that, yeah. So you made a debut in 94, was it? I don't know. I don't, yeah, no. no, I don't yeah. know. No, but then I mean, yeah, that, that was in London. It was a terrible fight. Was yeah, he was he was a season, he was like a journeyman. Yeah, so he knew what to do. He leaning over me, and it was the first time I've been in the pro ring. Obviously, the referee's talking to me because they don't talk to you in amateur. And I'm yeah. thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> He's talking to me, and the, the guy I'm fighting is leaning all over me. And I'm looking at the referee. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> what's going on here? Is this what I got myself to let myself yeah. in for? Um, but I won the fight. Uh, yeah, and my second, I, yeah, I improved obviously 
um, as, as it went on, yeah, as it went on, because I got, yeah, I got the just... Too early. Really, was it? Yeah, yeah, too early. Too early. What was the opponent like? Was he? It was tough. Really tough. Yeah, yeah, I was bleeding after that, pissing blood. Really? Yeah, because he hit. I've never been winded as much as I was in that fight. Has uh, you, anyone ever boxed, Spud? You've been winded though before. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. When you when you're fighting in training, you can just say, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, even right. though you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. In a fight, you can't do that. You got to pretend that you do. Yeah. He does. You know, as a fighter. <laughs> I'm sure he knew. Because <laughs> hopefully you can mask it properly. But yeah, winded about seven. The first half of the first couple of rounds, I was alright. What my mistake was, my weight, a lot. I yeah, I, I struggled with trying to make the weight. Even then, even when you start. Yeah, yeah, I struggled. Um, just because I never had no advice. There wasn't yeah. there wasn't a nutrition like there is now. They be there like the Joshua's and all that. They've got somebody dealing with every aspect of their really? training. Yeah, everything. Yeah. We did. We just left ourselves to do it. To do yeah. it back in back and in that's the day. That's true, isn't it? It's like in boxing, there's a lot of gaps that can be filled. Needs, yeah, needs to be. Needs to be for safety. Yeah. For safety. Yeah, exactly. For sanity. Just for yeah. But, um, I forgot the question. Did you ask me for you? No, I was just kind of talking right. about it. I do that a lot. I'm that's on the cannabis cool. oil. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, so it makes you forget a lot. Yeah, that's supposed to be good for the Very good. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. good. Good for you stone, getting stoned as well. <laughs> <laughs> well I suppose, so after that, you started to sort of almost pick up titles at where on Yeah. Period. Yeah, so, so let's go back to the fight, the 10th fight, though. Yeah, we, that's what we were talking about, weren't we? Um, so, yeah, on what's. Zafiru Balug, Balugu, Balugu. I was going to try and say the name. Yeah, yeah. Fight. Zafiru Balugu, yeah, yeah. something <laughs> like that. But he boxed Frankie Lowell's after that for a world title. He was a great fighter. Tough. He was like a Zulu warrior. First part of the fight, I was doing all right, but then I gassed out. But saying that, I think he would have done the job anyway because he would just hit me with the, down to the belly. He was a body snatcher. And I was winning so many times throughout the fight. And the 10th round, I think it was, the referee jumped in. I said, thank fuck for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you never quit? Did you quit? Never, yeah, never, quit. never. Like, yeah, yeah, so I was glad that, yeah. I couldn't quit, but you know, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't fight, I won't fight and everything. Back fuck for that. Um, but yeah, so then I obviously went after that fight, rehabilitated, evaluated. It was because my trainer, my manager, Chris Saniga, had so much faith in me, and I had faith in me. I thought I could win a world title at that age anyway, at that stage anyway. Yeah. But you know, you have to be smart about it, you know. Um, and after that, we corrected it and I went on. I suppose we talk about it a lot, but it's a lot different then to now we're protecting that home. Yeah. So now it's all about that. Yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd say don't concentrate on that now, even now. It means nothing. Yeah. No, especially early on. Obviously, when you've got a world title, you don't want to lose. And I mean, uh, and obviously, everyone wants to be made over and beat that ball. But it doesn't mean anything. Don't keep beat yourself up. It sounds like that fight was a really good leveler for you. Yeah. To know where you were and what yes. you needed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because from then on, you went like sit, sit back down, basically. That's yeah. what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sit back down. Like two or three years after that fight, that you started doing kind of. Like yeah, I think my fight, my first was a Mex was it was a Mexican before that. They on in. Intercontinental was after that. Intercontinental yeah, yeah, that's the Mexican. Yeah, that was after. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, after that, I just, you know, you realise, and and I was I was sparring with with, with other champions as well, former champions. After, or, after the fight, yeah, yeah. After that fight, I was sparring yeah. with other people like Eubanks, Nigel Ben, Frankie Lyles, Rochigani. Was it Rochigani from Germany? Yeah. On Eubank box. So I sparred with a lot of yeah. good quality champions, so yeah. I got a level of how where I was. Yeah. Did you, how did you go from those kind of fights? Yeah, I dealt with them. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I dealt with them. Me and Mewbanks had some wars. We had some wars. Yeah, our trainers are like, stop. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of the time. But it was lovely. I loved it. And in Bristol, coming to Bristol, that's what it was all about when I first started. Sparring was like a fight. Yeah. Um, and especially if you're from from out of town as well. You know, as, as I was when I first started coming here, you got to prove yourself. Yeah. And I, you, I just loved, I just loved getting into wars, yeah. which ain't a great thing. It ain't a, a thing that I'd advise anyone to, if they got into boxing, to be able to love. Yeah. But it was just in me. I just loved getting into wars. Yeah. Everyone be like, "Oh, you're right." Yeah. This, yeah. Pumped, you know what I mean? This, this is great. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so it was like two or three years where you won Dovio Intercontinental, yeah. British, European, like riding the wave, doing fantastic. Yeah. And I think 
you have a lot. I don't, what I think you, what yeah, shoulder. you relinquished your, your Yeah, I signed a contract with Frank Warren. <laughs> Mistake. But that was enable, enabling me to fight for, um, I'm not sure which Barry was. The IBM. Oh, IBM. That's what I was in. Yeah, that's what I was boxing for when I boxed on Jawai, wasn't it? That, that was what I was for. And then, it, then it, the, what, what the intentions were was for, for me to fight for the IBF world title after that fight. So it was, it was, it was sort of an eliminator. There would have probably been another fight, but to me, they were saying, oh, this is an eliminator. Like they do, they chat. Rubbish. But um, yeah, I boxed on Jawai. And yeah, my shoulder came out in the third round. I mean, going back a little bit, because obviously I remember the commentary leading up to that about you relinquishing those belts. I gave the belts up, yeah, yeah the British and the Europeans. Were saying, well, I'm not sure that Stupid. Yeah. Stupid. What was your involvement in that decision? Was that I, I was young. I didn't have a clue what was going on behind the scenes. All I knew is I wanted a world title. So that's what they dangled in front of me. So that was, that was all right for me. Yeah. Whatever, I want a world title. I'm not accomplished. Even though I've, I've done a lot, like can you still hear me? Yeah. Testing. Yeah. <laughs> Even though in boxing I've done a lot, it, before, not now, but before I was never happy because I never won a world title. I concentrated too much on winning a world title. But you know, I should be proud of what I've done. Yeah. But yeah. all that was on my mind when I signed the contract with Frank Warren. It was, yeah, you're giving me a world title, so yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. So, so which was a mistake, I should have should have kept it. But saying that, I, my shoulder came out. You know, my shoulder came out and I wasn't able to fight for another year, over a year. Um, to me, the injury was just a freak indus indus industry, so in the injury. When you, when you punched or? Yeah, I, um, he was a short guy. They're the worst people to fight, short guys. But my punch, my fist glanced off his head and my forearm hit his head and I just carried on and it pushed it out backwards. It didn't hurt, it was just, yeah, I'm really looking, like, looking down here at your hand. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to drop it to the ground because I'm thinking, oh, yeah, 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 it's weird, I couldn't do much to it. But yeah, what's the question? Yeah, so I'm just saying that was a huge disappointment for you. It was, but at the time, I'm just thinking, oh, do you know what? I'm coming back, I'll, I'll be out for a couple of months and I'll be back. You know what I mean, that's what I was thinking about. You know? It was quite a long break then, wasn't it? it was yeah, it was a long break. And in the break, you know, you get out party and drinking, yeah. there's a lot of things that you shouldn't do. Yeah. And was the, was the reason for the break the injury or was it was it more to injury? injury? Was it the injury? Maybe I stayed out a bit longer than I should have yeah. after a, a while, you know. Yeah. But yeah, the reason for it was the injury. But then um, that's when I got in trouble with the, um, the fight I had out and went to prison and sent after that. Okay. Yeah. So then in Are you going to put hey, is that going in there or all that? We can, we can that I don't mind, I don't mind if, if you want to put it in. Yeah, I don't mind, I don't mind. Yeah. Well, what happened there? Yeah, well, I was, I was out a lot yeah. because I wasn't training. Yeah. Um, in Basingstoke. And in Basingstoke, I was famous. I was uh, a face. I was a face. So it was, it, was, it was the wrong thing for me to be doing. But once again, that's where you need the guidance and uh, the people Imagine. telling you this, yeah. you know? So it was, it was wrong of me to be out, but people are always having a pop basically, that's what I'm saying. I was in a takeaway after a club. Yeah. My sister and her friend were there. This guy was picking on my, my sister and her friend. Yeah. I said, get off. He said, no, if we got into a fight. And then, yeah. The rest of yeah, the rest of history. So then you came back. Yeah. One. And then I think it was quite soon after you had another fight. And then. Yeah, I, I, tell me about it. Which, which fights were they? Didn't you have a you had a fight oh. with somebody Vegas, which was Johnny Vegas, which was meant to be That's um, right. a warm up. But yeah, and I drew. It was a draw, wasn't it? Yeah, because I I was fighting then at cruiserweight. Yeah. So I was lazy. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's why. I, that's what it was. And I was fighting because I could. I wasn't really in it mentally. Yeah. Still, I'm kind of like I was quite bitter, and I wasn't in it mentally when I was doing it. But yeah, and I, and I under, underestimated him, I suppose. But fighting a cruiserweight, I was a lot slower. Even in my head, I, I didn't think I was slow, but you realise when you get into the ring and start fighting, oh, yeah. actually, this is hard work. Lifting, because I, I think I was like 15 stone. Sorry, no. I was 14, 14 and a half stone for that fight. It's a lot of weight. 
You know, I'm naturally, this is what I am naturally. When you strip yourself down, yeah. that's what I am naturally. So I'm 12.5 at the minute. Yeah, so that's, what's that? That's super, that's super just... 12 stone is super midway, but yeah, you'd walk around about 12.5. Not that I ever did walk around at 12.5. <laughs> 13 stone. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I still can't go <laughs> <laughs> so, You OK? Yeah, so after that, what happened? Because you, you then had a bit of a spell. I've done prize fire. fire. Um, once that? again, it was a cruise away thing. It was just that it's, um, someone. What happened? That's it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there now. So, but Oki, Oki, Oki happened, didn't it? Tony. That was before the British yeah. title, the um, yeah. prize fire. You had a win and then a loss and then a little, tiny little break. And then I and thought, then I boxed for Oki. Yeah, yeah. Then I boxed Oki. Yeah. I was with Frank. I signed with Frank Warren again, foolishly then. And Frank Warren didn't like me for some reason. Um, because I wasn't his boy, really. I, he was just promoting me. I was a, he need, they need to control them. You know what I mean, because when you win a world title, they need to know that you're not going elsewhere. Because obviously they've done the job to get you the world title. But anyway, he didn't contact me. He didn't go to the fight, the British title fight. Usually he's at a, uh, a title fight of his fires. He didn't contact me. Didn't contact me after the fight. And I think a year went by, nothing. Nothing. I've just won a British title. Nothing. I was given nothing. Yeah. So eventually, stupidly, because I was, I'd been out of the gym probably, and I'd put on weight. I said, "Well, listen, what? I want my, I want my contract back." Because if I didn't ask for this, he'd, he'd end up taking. If I went with someone else, he'd still take the 25% yeah, as yeah. well as the other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not that I got it paid in my last few fights anyway. I mean, I never saw any money, but. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So I asked him for my contract back and he said, well, you have to give me the... I think this must have been longer than a year because they would have stripped me from the title, the British title long before that, but he asked me to vacate the title so his boy, cleverly, yeah, could fight for it because that's who his boy at the time was. Gave me a little bit of money and told me I couldn't fight a light heavyweight. Couldn't fight? No. Nah. So I said, yeah, all right. So I just wanted to get in the ring and fight again because I was broke. Not that, like I said, I didn't get paid, but that's when they um, someone called me up and said, "Oh, there's an opportunity for you to fight in Prize Fire." I jumped on it, right? but it was stupid, stupid. My dad wasn't happy. Um, a lot of people around, but I, you know, I, I just wanted to fight again, earn a bit of money, and yeah. they stopped that format, don't they? Really, they don't really do much. No, nah, I don't think they do. No. no. So, but yeah, so I got beat by Buster, Buster Keaton. Was it Buster yeah, Keaton? John Buster yeah. Keaton. yeah. After that, what happened after that? So, you know, in um, Prize Fighter, again, and I know I asked you this earlier, but a lot of people were sort of saying after the shoulder injury, yes. it, ne you never, it never came back, it never healed properly. But no. That wasn't the case. Was no, it? I've had three operations. Two, the first two operations, yeah, they were terrible because it was just done by a doctor who didn't really know anything about boxing or sports. But the, the last operation was done by a proper proper dude. I think he done... Who's the heavyweight that did, did, No. Oh, no, before. Fra Ju not Judas Francis. Um, but I had the shoulder injury. Yeah, he had the shoulder injury. He boxed with one arm. Oh, the one who won the title. Yeah. He knocked the other guy out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he had one arm, didn't he? And he was like... Was that Danny Williams? Danny Williams. Yeah, so oh, the same the same guy who done his, done oh, mine. Really? So it's been, been fine ever since. But obviously, you still got it in the back of your head. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I think in my last couple of fights, I was throwing it a lot, I think, a lot more. Yeah, so after prize fighter, so I'm just thinking... I retired you, again after that. Retired. I retired, yeah, after prize fighter. Yeah, and what happened because you had the, the title fight, which is probably the last fight of your career, wasn't it? The British title fight yeah, against yeah. Bob Bazija. Yeah. 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 Before that, you had... I'd done um, Matthew Barney for the British title. Yeah, Drew. So you had British Commonwealth and then you had the IBO International Intercontinental. Yeah, yeah. Well, but I boxed for the British again, like light, light heavyweight against Matthew Barney yeah. at Wembley. Drew. No, not Drew. He beat me. I, I won, I think. But now I just boxed with one arm. Yeah, yeah just, my arm had gone, yeah. My arm yeah, had gone yeah. in training. So I went into the fight knowing that I only had one arm. Oh, really? But, you know, and I, I, some say that I should have got it. But they couldn't give it to a one-arm bandit, the yeah. British title. It would be pointless because yeah. I'd have to have time out again to fix yeah, it, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so did you go into that fight because you were desperate to win or you needed the money? No, or? no. I, I went into the fight because it was, you know, 
it was I was something that I was capable of doing. I was, I, I love boxing. I, I, I mean, I just felt you could still win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have won, but yeah, I should have got the British title, but it, you know, it didn't go my way. So yeah, you had that little flurry again of titles for British Commonwealth IBO. Then you had the, the draw and then the fourth, the fourth loss um, in Prize Fire. Yeah, and yeah. Then came back to 2014, which was the Bob Madison fight. Yeah. And then I had a couple. Yeah, did I have a couple before that? Was it? There was a couple before that, wasn't it? Was there not a couple? You had, you had like a little break before the Bob Edison fight. Yeah, yeah. And then it had, the, and then that that fight was an absolute scrap. Like yeah. I watching that Channel Five, watching it as a young, young. Well, my, I'd, I'd sorted everything out. Demons in my head. I was training good for that fight. Yeah. I mean, I was in. You looked incredible. Yeah, but yeah. The, the 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 thing that I didn't have was my father. He wasn't training me, and that is where my success come from as you know, to say, how much we need to with from my father you yeah. know just to remind you even though I, in my head i know what my dad taught me from all them years but you just need reminders while you're actually doing it yeah yeah yeah. i mean and he, he wasn't in the, he wasn't in my corner right. no so i wasn't trained by my dad for a long time for that fire yeah. so yeah i just went in with the wrong game plan and i think you said that's you know that regardless of windows or draws that you said that was yeah halfway through the fight i'm like after being it and feeling them hard punches in my face. It was it in that fight as well. I realised how small the gloves were. Actually, you know, ten ounce gloves are horrible. Yeah. But um, yeah, halfway through, I thought in my, I thought to myself, even if I win this, I'm going, I'm leaving because yeah. this ain't what I want to do. Yeah. This is I don't I don't feel the same way as when I was younger. I was invincible when I was younger. Yeah. Even a bullet couldn't stop me in my head, yeah, you know. Yeah, of and that's what I, that's the quality that I took into the fight. I still took that quality in there. Even with that in mind, yeah. for 12 rounds and not having one moment in them in that fight that I felt on top, yeah. I still carried on. Yeah. Which, I, which I'm, which for me was it was it was a bad fight, but it was a good fight because it showed my heart. Yeah. To me. Yeah, I was. I was to like, me, no. I, it to yourself. Yeah, to myself, and that was enough for me. That was enough for me. So you know. So it might have been a good thing that you, you lost in that kind of way because you. It was the best thing to lose in that and and leave the. The, the game, man. yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if if I'd lost it and if I lost the fight and still thought like, I didn't do enough or blah blah, blah I'd have maybe yeah, come back. And, and I'd have maybe come back, yeah. even though I fought halfway through, never again. But yeah. so kind of put it to bed. Exactly. Put it to bed. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I'm good. I ended on a good note. Yeah. When people talk to me about that fight, they don't talk about his performance. No, no, I, that's what. I, that's what yeah, they do. Oh, I mean, you, you yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good. That was good enough for me. So then, from then on, I was about to say, like, what, what did you do from then on? So you know, a lot, when you walk away from boxing, I know you said you put it to bed. Yeah. But how easy was it just to cut the ties and kind of walk away from it? Well, it was because uh, that is what frame of mind I was in. And I, you know, I, I, I accepted the fact that I couldn't, I'm not the same guy anymore, yeah. you know? Even though people, you know, you talk to people, oh, he's a great fighter, and that's what kind of like drove you out. You, like, you still at him. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, yeah, I was. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, you realise, you know, you grow up, you realise you're not the same guy. It doesn't matter if you're not either. You've done your bit. Done You've made right, your right. mark. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter anymore. Um, and that's what made it easy for me to just walk away. But I train others now. Yeah. And for me, that is the best thing. At, you know what I mean? I love it. Especially white collars, because these are guys that never box obviously but never had a fight even some of these guys in the street yeah so you're teaching these guys how to fight but so some of these guys never had a fight and you're teaching them from scratch yeah you know giving them everything you got you're not just giving them a diluted you're giving them everything because you know they get they're getting into a fight no matter what level it is it's a yeah, serious it's a, a serious yeah, thing and seeing them get in the ring change their diet change their life lose however much stones yeah, is amazing how long is the period of like the camp kind of thing eight to twelve weeks Really? Yeah, some of them are always in the gym. After the first fight, that's it. They're in the gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they follow us around. They they always want to box on our shows. Yeah. Um, what else do you do? Do your shows here at the Marriott? Just here They're now. Here. Just here now. Yeah, we've done them at the Passenger Shed at Pistol Hotel, just over the road. But then we're here now. We're. Here. So when did you start doing all of that then? So, Dahlia, when when did we start doing our white collars? So was it before you retired then? Yeah, 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 a little bit before. Oh, okay. So when you retired, you, you kind of focused on concentrating, the yeah, and yeah, the and training team. these guys and training pros as well. I try, uh, at the Chris Sandigar's gym, okay. I train pros. Um, I help along with Askins, Lee Askins, oh, um, and other pros he's got there, yeah. ones that no one knows about. But yeah, wicked. but I don't find the enjoyment in that. 
No, because you have to. It's long term, that, isn't it? It's yes, sort of, you have to have them from age. young. Yeah. So they understand you and yeah. you know and understand what you're trying to teach them, yeah. the way that like you're trying like to teach them. Quick fix, quick yeah. Turnaround, quick thing. turnaround thing. Yeah. 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 Say it's harder to teach a, an old dog new tricks. I guess with the pros. And that's what it is. is. That that's what it is. Yeah. And because I'm not their full-time trainer, I'm giving them advice, and they're looking at me with respect because they, I've been in my position. But so I'm giving them advice, but then they go home to their real trainers, and yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, totally different. Yeah, but what the trainer's trying to do, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some trainers like body shots. Some trainers like jab and move, jab and move. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more, I'm more of a mind. I try and train the mind because that's the main thing that you need in there. The mind. That's what I had in there a lot of the time. I, mean, I had all the skills, yeah. you know, because of my father giving me that. Yeah. Um, but with that, you need the mind. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. when you're getting hit, to not feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. You know, not to. You know what I mean, yeah, just yeah. get it and just right, come back straight back. back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's that's what I try and teach people. Yeah. And with, with, when it comes to their style, the, whatever style they fight, it doesn't so matter. I'm not, I'm not, yeah. Whatever, whatever comes natural to them, yeah. because that's the only way you, you can be confident about what you're doing is if, if, if you feel naturally, yeah. if you feel it comes Especially easy when to you're you. Doing it over like six, like six or eight to twelve weeks. Yeah. They need to be trained what they naturally. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. And just better, just, just, just home in what they've already got. I mean, because yeah. at the end of it's only a white collar fight. I mean, yeah. they, they're not going on to. So do you do it, do it like the the. Um, people do it for charity, like some of the fighters. They some do? fighters will choose to do it for charity. Some yeah. some do it for their own, their own pocket. They get yeah. they get um, a commission for the tickets they sell. Okay, um, yeah, just give us a bit of information about the whole white collar, like the event. So what happens when you go there? What what happens in the event? So, so the singing and all that. Yeah, so we we set up um, maybe dinner, yeah. pre course meal. Uh, we we we've got a singer in. Um, sometimes a magician, a ma magician. Okay. And uh, we have an auction, so a lot of boxing memorabilia is sold, um, and then the fights, yeah. and then the fights, and then afterwards we might we 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 stay open until one o'clock and just have a just have a gathering, you know, yeah. just to yeah. socialise, a drink. Good night. Yeah, it is nice a good. Night. It is a good night. It is a good night, um, and it's a dress up night as well. It's a black. It's not a black tie, but it's a suit. Yeah. It's a suit affair. Yeah. So it cuts out all the yeah. crap. It's, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> quick crap. Yeah. And, the, and the, yeah, the scraps all in the room. Well, people, someone told me this the other day. It is true. People that a lot of the time, because they got their nice club on, they don't want to mess up, do they? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Come back to me in another day when I've got my tracky on. Meet me outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so I guess now it's a good time to talk about the bombshell. Yes. You've come in with cancer. So. Was there anything that kind of made you feel um, that you worked well leading up to Yeah, in the beginning of last year, I, I started, I, the first sign was a cramp, a cramp I had. I had this three times throughout the year, but this was severe cramping. Yeah. Kept me up all night and it, oh, it was agony. On the third time, I decided, I decided it wasn't just the cramps by that stage there, but after that, the last time I decided to go to GP, my bowel movements had changed. So no longer could I go to a poor man shit, it's yeah, like yeah, baby yeah. shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that, that changed, plus there's a lot of, get into details here, but mucus, there's a lot of mucus down below. So I went to GP, he sent me for an ultra scan first, I went for the ultra scan, they was a bit, I, I, I didn't click, I didn't, because obviously I'm still thinking, no, nah, obviously it ain't cancer, it's just irritable bowels. Like irritable bowels, well you think about it instantly, yeah. it, anything that happens in our bodies uh, as older men, I think you instantly think, oh shit, could be cancer, especially if you look it up and then the cancer comes up. Yeah. Um, the woman that was doing the ultrasound looked a little bit shady. Oh, she never said anything bad. She said, "Oh, we can't see this because something's blocking it." I goes, "All right." She goes, oh, "I ain't worried you." I goes, "Yeah, you have really, but you know, it's what it is." Then I went for an X-ray and then an MRI, and then that's when they said you've got cancer. Yeah. Well, no, the, the, the woman that I went to, to get the results of the MRI hadn't had the results. So she done the finger yeah. test. Worst nightmare. On, like, um, in a fetal position. <laughs> <on the> <laughs> oh, it, it was horrible. She patted me, patted me on the shoulder. You doing well? You doing all right? Oh. But anyway, she then said, yeah, 
you got you got bowel cancer and you got was that last, late last week so. that was this year oh, beginning yeah that's when i got that's when they gave me the diagnosis the the issue started last year but then yeah. by the like, beginning of last year she really got cancer um but it was only bowel cancer at the time from the scans with two little metastases that means it spread to the lungs two little five millimeter less less than yeah. three weeks later i had another scan of pep pep ct the ct scan and the liver had been totally taken over by the cancer and also spread to the lungs so now it's in three places so that's when they said you've only got four months if you don't do chemo and three years if you got it and even the chemo is not designed to get rid of it it's just designed to prolong your life which you know i wasn't happy about i've never been happy about chemo i've been looking up this sort of thing for a long time and my views on chemo is negative you had a session but i did have a session because obviously it taken over my liver in three weeks yeah. so i thought shit i need to do something now quickly slow it down slow it down and it done the job i had four sessions of chemo but after i said no i don't want no more yeah but it could have been the other things i was doing like i said i'm a vegetarian don't eat sugar yeah. cut down on my dairy um alkaline in my diet cannabis oil i'm doing so much that could be contribute to the slowing it down and i'm still doing it now so yeah it, you know yeah it did its job yeah. but it wasn't about to take over my life chemotherapy because i was i just felt every time i did it i was feeling will ill you can't walk around like if you're on it like no you feel you feel terrible plus you, you you're worried about you know picking up any infections yeah. from people i couldn't cut a cuddle my kid yeah, yeah, because you're you know you, i have to pee in a different toilet you know, he can't go in the toilet and it's just too restrictive. So that, like I said, that's a real bombshell. You're talking about it very matter of fact. Right? Yeah, because... Uh, what, was, what was the... I know it's a stupid question in a way, but obviously it's going to have a big impact on the family unit. Yeah. And do you feel like you've actually come to terms with with it or with the family? How? I've, um, the not, not, not right? more with the dying thing. At first, I tried, in the first two days of being told you've got four months if you don't do chemo, I was obviously in a bad way, you know. But after a while, this only took two days, you come to terms with dying, and actually, it feels quite nice, strangely, because I said this before, but it's like life's hard, and you, I wouldn't kill myself, but there's something that's, that's, that's taking me out of this world, you know. It's, and it was like a weighted lift been lifted strangely yeah strangely my wife don't like hearing that but you know um it's a weight has been lifted so i don't i no longer do i have to worry about the stress all i need to worry about now is making sure that my family's all right when i leave so that's all it was i was all right with it but then after the second day i thought nah because that's how they kill people the doctors are wrong for giving people terminal injury um diagnosis, diagnosis because I've, I've read about this or people have spoke to me like somebody's been given four months because they've been given the terminal they've got them given up they've died in a week yeah they're the ones that are killing people with that yeah, with that it's diagnosis it's bang out of order so i i fought back from there i thought well no the, the statistics you're you're basing your this on is yeah, yeah it's 70 to 80 year old people yeah. you know and these are people that you know well, i don't know what kind of person they were mentally yeah. but 70 to 80 year old person that's not me is it it's not me um so i just yeah i just started researching and realized that, that just because they say it's terminal doesn't mean it's terminal all that means is that they can no longer do anything for you yeah and that's the day as in the, as the nhs, the NHS. Yeah. that's all that means yeah I mean, are you still because i've heard it mentioned i'm going for a scan yeah. you're looking for treatment abroad, i'm going to it? india you are going to india. on this i'm leaving on the 5th of june I went to Lanzarote last week to see a consultant and a doctor, um, okay. which gave me great advice. Yeah. Um, but India, I'm going to India, Palachi, for um, um, Ayurvedic. I'm, I'm into the spiritual kind of thing. I, I do TM, Transcendental Meditation. And yeah, I'm going to a clinic, a retreat that um, deal with Ayurvedic treatments, okay. yoga, meditation, plus uh, Ayurvedic. So mind training. Oh, yeah, and, and proper therapies, yeah, yeah. Ayurvedic therapies. It's the ho oldest holistic form of treatment there is. Really? Yeah, and that's the road I want to go down. Yeah, yeah I want to be hovering off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> We'd all like a bit of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, the boxing community 
he's just come to the fore, I believe. Lee, Lee Haskins. Yeah, he's set up the, the, the just the just given page. Yeah, um, the big event. With the big event with order. James DeGale, Ricky Hatton, Joe Kazaki. Joe Kazaki. Yeah, the, it's been amazing. I, I, yeah, it's been amazing, and it, it's just um, shows what impact I had. Or get to know certain people with the same situation as me, and treat them to the same. Yeah, treat them to the same treatment I've got that I've, I've used to cure myself. That's what I want to do. I think it's a given now. Or foundational. Yeah, yeah, maybe sort of, sort of something out like that. But it's you have to. It's, it's your job from the time that you cure yourself to tell others. Yeah. It'd be wrong not to. Yeah, it'd be it'd be wrong not to, and so that's what I intend to do afterwards. Yeah, it's wrong because it, it, cancer isn't the end of the world. Yeah, you know, in years to come, when they've stopped earning money from from chemo, when they found some other way of earning money, it's going to be like the cold was back in the days. You know I mean, oh yeah, do you remember when they cancer was killing people or AIDS even? They, that, that doesn't kill people nowadays. Yeah. It's going to be one of them things. Do you remember when cancer was killing all them people? ridiculous you know so that I just want to show people that and let people know where to go what to eat and don't panic don't give up if you've been given a um, the, yeah the terminal yeah. diagnosis that's not the I mean, it doesn't mean your life's over yeah. you know because that's what like I said that's what kills people when they give up yeah, yeah. well it's it, no word of a lie the best thing that's ever happened to me cancer well, not even cancer, because they gave me the diagnosis of cancer, but it wasn't terminal. So because it wasn't terminal, I was oh, I just have a couple of chemos. Oh, I don't like chemo, but because it ain't serious, I can get rid of it that way quickly. But then I then they told they told me terminal, and it's more serious now. Four months to live. So I studied, and and, got, and it's not something to be scared of. It can be cured easily. You don't have to go to these retreats. These are just something I need to go to because I want to make sure that. There's someone there have feeding me. The, and get all of the knowledge as well. So get all the knowledge as well, yeah. Exactly, yeah. The but you can do this at home. Cure yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just eating the right things, putting the right things in your body from the, from the yeah. moment you get told to now. All about the diet. Yeah, all about the diet. Yeah. And the mind. Yeah. yeah. That's a real... It's nice to come down here and hear such a positive message about something like that. Yeah, so well... It's, it's, it's going to be great to get that message out there. Yeah, that it needs to be it needs to be out there. Because, because well, again, we appreciate the time tonight. Thank Does you very much. Want to give any other message you want to send out to anyone? Like that? No, not really. No. Not really. Just as all in the mind. Just as all in the mind. It's all in the mind. Yeah. Just be strong. Just be strong. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.